excited they are about this match and I cannot wait to get into it. Yeah, it's going to be extremely fun for us and for you, the viewers at home, to watch this one. And, you know, what's really interesting is when you talk about Rosemary watching those games uh, and she's been spying almost, it's almost the best time to actually kind of think about the teams and what you're going to do in strategy. So, like you say, she's going to be definitely one to watch here. Adam's got his, going to have his work cut out for him. Certainly is. And the leads are out. We have got their Ghastly and the Trapinch coming out for Adam, whereas Rosemary has got that Ryolu and the Axu there out on the field. So Adam going for that really strong offensive pressure there with that Ghastly, um, going to be able to apply a lot of pressure. But Ryolu, again, one of those Pokemon that we actually even see in the competitive video game, don't we? Yeah, we do with that prankster ability that it does have access to. It uses things commonly like coaching to boost the attack of its partnering Pokemon, which is very dangerous and something Ooh. that, that Rosemary is going to have to watch out for. Yeah, I mean, the life orb there on the Axu doing a huge amount of damage to the opposing Trapinch did about 50%. And it's going to be doing even more if it's able to survive out the next turn, thanks to the coaching from the Ryulu. Going to boost up its defense and its attack. But no, that Ghastly so, so strong. Going for the Dazzling Gleam, picks up the Solid KO against the Axu and takes down the Ryulu to the Focus Sash. There's some really good information there for Adam. Um, as the Trapinch is actually able to follow up, that Focus Sash is already no more and also to no avail. As in this turn, what? One of Little Cub, Adam's two Pokemon pick up a double KO. That's a huge first <laughs> turn for Adam, and it really, really, it really puts Rosemary on the back foot here. You know, Adam taking a big lead here and already taking down two of Rosemary's Pokemon, and it's such a deficit now. But she is going to bring in the Eevee and the Goth Eater. Yeah, I love seeing these additions that Rosemary has brought in. Of course, that Eevee, the Gigantamax version, that could definitely turn the tide of a match. And I think it's something that we and the viewers at home would really love to see is Gigantamax Eevee getting a little bit of action here out on the Pokemon field. Gothita, of course, though, a Pokemon that you know is known for setting up that trick room could potentially put itself into an environment where it can be a little bit more helpful here for rosemary and i'm so excited to see this we have got rosemary going for the gigantamax on the ev oh i'm so excited to see this lee yeah and here it comes the ev we talked about in team preview <laughs> is on the field and one of the only baby pokemon you know for the little cup that can mm -hmm. actually use that gigantamax ability so very exciting to see it here and rosemary has to really do something now you know she's got a long way to kind of even up the score now and uh, pull this one back so it'll be interesting to see what this eevee does as we do see the trap inch just protect here and another dazzling gleam come out from the ghastly Oh, I mean, wise protect there from Adam on the trap inch, you know, avoiding the fake out from the Goth Eater. The Ghastly, of course, locked into that Dazzling Gleam. So that's just the move it has to keep going for. But of course, it will get that boost as well from the Choice Specs. And it does a decent amount of chip to the Eevee. But that Max Quake going into um, the Levitating Ghastly, just so unfortunate there for Eevee. Yeah, and it's very difficult, I think, for Rosemary right now. The, the Ghastly's just kind of free to fire off these Dazzling Gleams, and you can see how much damage they're doing every turn. It's it's definitely a Pokemon that Rosemary kind of has to really make sure that she's taking full, full kind of time to look at and try and remove from the field because you can't leave it alone. If you let it just sit on the field like it's doing now, it's going to quickly kill everything on her side of the field, and she's already lost two Pokemon to this. Well, Eevee looks so delighted in the damage it is dealing out there. Going for the max steel spike into the Trapinch. Going to boost up the defenses on Rosemary's side of the field. And will be able to pick up a KO against that Trapinch as well. So Adam will be having one of his Pokemon return to its Pokeball. But it does, of course, give him the opportunity to bring in something else from the back now to continually apply pressure. Rosemary able to boost up the HP of Eevee with that heal puzzle. Though. That's certainly going to be helpful, particularly while it is in this um, Gigantamax stage as well. It's still got one more turn. It's going to be able to deal out some really good damage. Yeah, it's a very nice tech to have on the, the Goth Eater there, the heal pulse, just making sure that your kind of main power Pokemon of your team is kind of staying around and, mm -hmm. and, and, and being able to act like you want it to and take down the, and make kills like it just has done onto that Trap Inch. Yeah, exactly. So much damage being thrown about here. And I think as well, you know, that Max Quake going into the Ghastly, Ghastly being locked into Dazzling Gleam, possibly 
predicting that it wants to switch out and just kind of reset a little bit um, so that it can come in and maybe go for something like a ghost type move like a shadow ball or something to try and pick up the KO against that goth eater a little bit later on in the turn but Adam just actually sticking with it here and just keeps going for those dazzling gleams uh, Sneasel jumping here on the field going to be the Dynamax option of course for Adam here um, I'm going to be able to apply some good pressure with that max knuckle going to be dealing super effective damage to the EV not enough to pick up the KO but I think the critical thing here is it's going to get that attack boost of course Gasly isn't going to mind. Um, it's not going to be very helpful to Gasly, but I'm sure it's just going to appreciate the support all the same. Um, as Evie reveals, it is the weakness policy. Oh my goodness, this is going to deal so much damage. It was able to survive the Dazzling Gleam. Yes, hanging on by only 6 HP. Oh my goodness, this is going to be a lot of damage with the G-Max Cuddle. And the G-Max Cuddle, the signature Gigantamax move coming out from the Eevee after that weakness policy has been activated, boosting that attack and special attack by two stages, more than enough to take down the Sneasel. And Rosemary's still hanging in here. She's got one Pokemon left on the field now, and it is that Gigantamax Eevee. It's got one turn of its Gigantamax turns left. So let's see, can it do enough to deal with the, 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 the Ghastly and what Adam's mm. remaining Pokemon? Yeah, that Cothney that's just come out onto the field, of course, it's a Pokemon that can be very, very kind of tricksy in the moves it can go for. It does have access to something like Dazzling Gleam for that offensive pressure. And, um, you know, if it is carrying something like the Focus Sash as well, any move from Eevee, um, it's going to be able to obviously survive that. Um, the Ghastly, of course, going for that Dazzling Gleam it's locked into, breaks through the adoration it has for Eevee and will be able to pick up the KO, taking game one for Adam. But Lee, I mean, that was definitely kind of turning back um, for Rosemary with the Eevee out there on the field. So amazing to see her nearly bring it back. But um, Adam just had such an offensive pressure. It was too strong with his synergy. I think that turn one really kind of put Rosemary on the back foot. But environment, it certainly would give her a great opportunity to kind of keep the longevity of her Pokemon out on the field while the partner Pokemon can deal out really, really big damage. So um, as soon as we're able to jump into that game two, we can see how they're going to maybe adjust up their leads um, and whether Adam needs to even adjust it at all. But he does indeed. It's going to be the coughing and the Archon here out on the field with Gothita and Omanyte for Rosemary. So changes a piece of both of our trainers and I have to say, I am loving the synergy from Adam here, um, having that coughing here out on the field paired up with the Archon. Yeah, and it's as you mentioned in the team preview, I think one of the things that Rosemary's probably indicated here is if she can get a trick room up, then it does make things a lot easier for her. So with that option, potentially on the goth eater now she has got the potential to set a trick room up and then gain the speed control advantage uh adam as well changing it up as well with the mm -hmm. archon you know it is a very strong pokemon so it's something that you need to watch out for as well especially with the neutralizing gas that will be potentially available on the coughing there to get rid of its defeatist ability that is the one drawback to using that pokemon that's the thing, Archer is such a strong Pokemon, but its ability holds it back. But if you pair it up with coughing and the neutralizing gas, then it's just going to be so strong. It's not going to have to worry about its ability holding it back. And as you can see, Adam has decided to Dynamax it, going straight for that Max Rockfall. I'm um, going to, of course, bring the sand onto the field at the end of the turn, but connect down onto that Omanyte and pick up a solid one-hit KO against it. Oh, the adorable little Omanyte is going to be leaving the field almost as quickly as it joined. But this Gothita is still here, um, potentially able to go for that Trick Room Sludge Bomb. However, going to come out first of all from the Ghastly, but Gothita easily able to take that and does get the trick room up and although it's sad for rosemary she lost the omanite she at least has the opportunity now to bring in a pokemon from the back that can take full advantage of this trick room it's almost the perfect situation you're quite sad to lose the omanite obviously you don't want to go down a pokemon so early in the game but as you're setting the trick room up it's the perfect opportunity for her to bring in a pokemon to take full advantage of this trick room and this is a perfect situation for rosemary mm -hmm. now she's got the maximum turns of trick room to take advantage of what has just come into the field in that leap Exactly, the leap coming on here into the field. And if that wants to be potentially the Dynamax Pokemon, you can go for some really kind of big, heavy offensive moves. Um, and you can potentially start setting up as well if it's got um, any kind of sort of ground time move going for those max quakes. You're going to start setting up your special defense. And if Adam maybe has that Gastly in the back for kind of an end game situation, that's going to help out a lot. But of course, the leap having access to something like Stockpile is going to be able to boost up its own defenses. So defense and special defense being boosted up on the leap as Gothita making use of Trick Room, going for that Psychic into the coughing not enough to pick up the ko but does a really big chunk of damage as coffee is able to retaliate with a sludge bomb targeting to that elite that's easily able to take it archon of course not going to enjoy this trick from environment moving last uh, but is able to fire off that max rock fall into the elite but 
The leaps boosting from that stockpile is really, really helping out here. Able to stay throughout the turn and now going into this next turn can maybe be a little bit more of an offensive pressure. Yeah, and Rosemary in a really nice position now. She can go for either the Psychic into the Coughing, remove that threat from Adam's side of the field, or she could maybe go for the heel post that we saw in game one to sp extend the longevity of this Lalip mm. after it has got that stockpile boost already, which has been so pivotal in allowing it to sit on the field for that little bit longer. Defensive plays, though, coming out from both of the players here at the moment. Adam going for that protect onto the coffin, predicting the psychic coming out from Gothita. Just trying to burn through some of these trick room turns as Lilip, of course, um, restores up some of its HP with that recover. Archon, however, going straight for the max rock fall again. Just going to go take almost about a quarter of damage into the Lilip. But I believe that is the very last turn of the Dynamax there from Adam. And Rosemary still has it to go. So I actually really like this play here by Rosemary, where she's preserved that Dynamax for a more opportune moment. You know, Adam doesn't have access to it anymore, whereas Rosemary has the opportunity to maybe start dealing out some really big damage where Adam can't protect himself as much. Yeah, and I mentioned the heal pulse. She doesn't actually need it because we saw the recover there and the leap in it. I mean, it's such a great play and a, a string of plays from Rosemary to stall out the, the Dynamax on Adam's side of the field. When you can do that and you've still got the Dynamax on your side of the field to take advantage of once you are in that perfect position, that's what you're looking for. As we see another stockpile come out from this leap. I'd be getting really worried if I was Adam right now. This leap is proving to be such a threat. Getting up, it's both of its defense and special defense stats. I'm going to make it a really, really bulky Pokemon out on the field. Gothita, of course, um, going to be KO'd there by the Sand, um, leaving Rosemary with her last two remaining Pokemon out on the field. Adam has utilized the opportunity to bring in the Sneasel, so obviously we'll have access to potential fake out in this next turn, but there's the Eevee again. It's so excited to be back on the field. We're excited to see it, and Rosemary still hasn't used her Dynamax. This could be the perfect opportunity to start dealing out some really big damage. Yeah, I'll be interested to see which one she does. Dynamax, if she goes for the Gigantamax on the Eevee or the Lilip, that's actually set up because it's such, it's so defensively built mm. now. You know, with those stockpiles behind it, it's going to take a lot for Adam to actually break it down and maybe a little bit of luck to get through it with a bit, you know, a critical hit mm -hmm. or something like that is what potentially could foil Rosemary's plans. But at the minute, she's sitting in an extremely strong position, still under this trick room and needs to take advantage of this trick room and these trick room turns while she's got the opportunity to. Exactly. Well, Rosemary going to go for that Gigantamax um, on the Eevee. Going to make her join hit us on the field, have its delightful cry sort of erupt around the arena and ready to try and pull this back for Rosemary. You know, she really wants to be able to take this 2-8 game three and try and fight it out for victory. But a really nice switch in there with Adam for the Ghastly because, of course, any ground type moves aren't going to affect the Ghastly due to its levitate ability. Um, and any normal type moves, of course, won't affect it either being a ghost type. Lilip going to regain a little bit more hate HP here as well as GMAX Cuddle comes out from the Eevee. It looks so happy to be dealing damage. It's just such a delightful Pokemon. Um, and it manages to pick up that KO. So dealing some really strong damage from Eevee. Uh, Sneasel is going to be KO'd. And this is where things get a little bit awkward now. Because if Ye Adam is bringing back in that um, coughing, then the levitate on the Ghastly isn't going to happen. Yeah, and then it's susceptible to those ground type attacks mm. from the Lily thing. That can be a bit of a problem for Adam um, and obviously it has been attracted the secondary effect from the G-Max cuddle from this EV as well will be affecting the Ghastly so whether Adam wants to risk maybe not attacking this turn through the infatuation is another thing to consider here the coughing in an awkward position now where it is in KO range and the Ghastly really not as comfortable was in that game one so Rosemary turned the tables but Adam's still not out of this we've seen how much pressure this ghastly can put on if it can start getting these dazzling gleams or shadow balls off it will start doing a lot of damage actually opting for the sludge bomb here oh it targets down into the leap does a decent chunk of damage despite the boost to the leap um and actually gets the poison that could be so detrimental going into the last couple of turns Eevee, however, going for the Max Quake into that coughing, picks up the solid KO um, and will, of course, get the special defense boosted up on Rosemary's side of the field. We know that that Ghastly is going to be locked into the Sludge Bomb now as well. And with the boost that Rosemary has enabled onto her Pokemon, it is going to have a tough time um, picking up KOs here. But at the same time, that poison is going to be a ticking clock against that Lilip. Um, it's just whether Eevee is maybe able to deal damage to this Ghastly. You know, it's going to have its Levitate ability now as well. Um, we know that Eevee has a Steel-type move. That's probably the only move it's going to have access to now to try and take down Adam's team. 
Yeah, and I feel like one of the things that you maybe would have looked at in hindsight would have been better to get rid of the ghastly before the coughing because taking advantage of the neutralizing gas, like you mentioned, Blue, to, you know, it removes the levitate so you can actually hit the ghastly. And now it's in a position where it's got the poison off, which is very useful for that Lily, which would have otherwise been extremely difficult to knock out. Now that's going to chip it down. And mm. again, going for another sludge bomb and getting the poison onto the Eevee as well. Well, Gasly's really on a mission here, gets the double poison. Eevee gonna go here for the max steel spike targeting down into the arch and does do a huge amount of damage though, picks up that solid KO against it. Uh, of course, super effective damage and gets the defense boost as well. Um, doesn't have to worry about the defense boost too much though, of course, special attacker Gasly over there. Um, but we can see how much damage that Gasly is dealing out in the leap. You know, we're looking at its move pool here and it doesn't have the most offensive moves. You know, we've seen the Giga Drain um, there as well, but whether or not that's going to be enough to whittle away against this Ghastly, um, while Lilip has its own sort of poison timer on there as well, it's certainly going to lead for a very interesting endgame. Yeah, and I think it, it comes down to the case of if Adam targets the EV now, now it's not Gigantamaxed, and it goes down, it's going to make things, like you say, very difficult for this Lily. It's going to be relying on those Giga Drains to stall out, really, and try and chip down this Ghastly as much as possible because it's not really going to be doing as much damage as needed, but we'll have to see what happens because the Sludge Bombs, as we know and we have seen, are going to be doing that considerable mm. amount of damage. And the EV, unfortunately, does drop for Rosemary. Yeah, Ghastly really has not fallen for any of Eevee's charms in this game. You know, hasn't been immobilized once and able to keep firing off those sludge bombs. And you can see from Malip, it's really not dealing a lot of damage with those Giga Drains. Um, and the poison's just able to keep chipping away, kind of, I guess, counteracting the HP recovery that Malip is doing with the Giga Drains. Um, whereas the Ghastly's still able to go for those sludge bombs. Um, fires off another one here until Malip does it about four or five hp of damage um but this is of course the other turn of events here lee recover is a thing yeah and definitely allowing rosemary a way out of this match you know if she can stall out these sludge bombs um with the the move options that she's got she's got giga drain she's got recovery she's got the stockpiles up already it might be enough for her to stall out the poison definitely isn't helping but saying that you know the, the Lilip is in a position now where it's not getting knocked out by the, the sludge bombs. And you can see here as she goes for the Giga Drain, it just gives her enough health to really take another sludge bomb and maybe get a recovery off and allow her to stall out these sludge bombs. So that's what we're kind of hoping for if you are on Rosemary's side. And if you're on Adam's side, you're kind of hoping either for a critical hit with a sludge bomb or just to kind of keep chipping away before these sludge bombs run out of PP. Yeah, in all honesty, I think if you're Adam, the critical hit is what you need right now. This Lily has been set up so perfectly by Rosemary throughout the whole game, you know, being able to get the special defense boosts up on there, um, using the Max Quake as well on the EV to boost them up even further and having those recovery options, you know, Giga Drain isn't doing a lot to the opposing Ghastly, but it's doing enough and Ghastly doesn't have option to that recovery in the same way that Lily does. So it's almost like the tables are really turning into Lily's favor here. You see it going for this Giga Drain once again deals a good chunk of damage, about a sixth of damage to that opposing Ghastly. And, you know, you just need one or two more of those turns and Lilip isn't going down in its HP bar. So it looks like Lilip's actually going to be able to take this Rosemary and push to a game three. Yeah, and I'm actually very surprised with the damage that the Giga Drain's doing. And I think just because of that, it is going to be enough to, to deal with the Ghastly and maybe just clinch the game for her. And those stockpiles early on and taking the opportunity to get those defensive boosts up was a very, very smart play here, especially against the offensive nature of Adam's team. Oh, 100%. I mean, that was just such a dynamic um, sort of turn of events. I mean, it's not always the most exciting way to end a game when you kind of have that recovery, but the fact that it actually came down... Not to use a pun or anything. <laughs> Never. We're not cheesy at all behind the behind the desk here, Lee. But let's not wait any longer and jump into game three because I want to see what strategies they're going to be able to bring. And obviously, who's going to become our Little Cup champion here in um, Pokemon Players Cup 2? And it's going to be for Adam, the Cottony and the Ghastly. Whereas Rosemary's side, she's got the Eevee and the Ryulu out in the field. Now, I am so excited by the synergy of Rosemary. We already know that that Eevee has got the weakness policy and it's now paired up to a Pokemon that is a fighting type. And I am just keeping my fingers crossed that we're going to see some really good synergy action coming out here from Rosemary. 
Yeah, very exciting leads from both players as they change things up coming into this second, this third game, I should say. Sorry, this is the deciding game. The, <laughs> the Gasly last one. out on the field again, <laughs> the last one again. Uh, the the Cotney is a nice introduction from Adam as well because it, it may have access to something like Taunt. It does have access to speed control as well with the Tailwind. So it is a supporting Pokemon. And boosted Gasly. It'd be interesting to see what support it provides for that Gasly that was so effective mm -hmm. in game one. That's the thing, Prankster ability does allow you to get all kind of tricks going and particularly if it's got access to something like fake tears, that's going to lower the special defense of the opposing Pokemon, allowing the Ghastly to deal out huge damage. It has Dynamax, however, so it's going to lose um, that restriction of the choice spec so it can change its moves in between turns, but of course will not get that extra boost to its special attack that the choice item gives it. But if it is going to be paired up with something like a fake tears cottony, then there's going to be a lot of destruction going out on the field. Rosemary, however, of course, going to die. Uh, Gigantamax up her Eevee as well. And I wonder if there's going to be a weakness policy activation. Um, it is indeed the fake tears coming out from the prankster cottony going to lower the special defense of that opposing um eevee as it gets hit by the vacuum wave from the rioli so again another priority move going to be able to proc that weakness policy but will eevee be allowed to move as max ooze comes out from the ghastly yeah and that Ooh. fake tier is really hindering rosemary's position there with the eevee with the vacuum move being a, a special base the, a priority attack to proc the weakness policy and maybe just push it over the edge a little too much to take that max sludge and um uh, it's really unfortunate <laughs> there adam taking a big lead and really using that ghastly to very very good effect Oh, I mean, goodbye, Eevee. It has been such a delight having you here out in the battle. But unfortunately, back to the Pokeball you go. As Lilip does join the field, though, for Rosemary in its stead. And of course, Lilip, we saw it kind of being the hero of that game too. But the one thing Adam's got going from at the moment, he still can, again, just go for that fake tears and move with the Ghastly. But Ghastly, having gone for that max ooze, now is also at plus one special attack. So it's just going to be so formidable and Rosemary doesn't have access to any more Dynamax. Going to follow up with another max ooze targeting down into that Lilip that took the fake tears. It is actually able to survive though on three HP. So we'll be able to survive out the turn, but I don't think that the combination of Lilip and Ryolu is going to be enough to really apply a lot of sort of offensive pressure to Adam's side. Lilip gonna go for that stockpile, so it does just wanna boost itself up, but I feel like that might have been a more opportune moment to have gone for something like a recover, um, because at only three HP, anything really that this Ghastly does, even potentially through a Protect, um, is gonna be able to pick up a KO against it. Yeah, and just the, the, the fake tears from the Whimsicott in combination with that Ghastly is just so potent. And you can see there, I was surprised that the Leap actually hung on. Mm. Rosemary managed to get a stockpile off, but it feels a little bit too late. And unlike game two, where she had the Trick Room support, haven't got that access to that here. And I think between the lead that Adam's thrown out, really probably preparing for that Gothita to come out on the field, having a way to stop that Trick Room. But otherwise, just being able to dish out fake tears and max oozes is just a very strong combination against rosemary's team yeah the max is just able to go against that lily removes it from the field but i think again this ghastly it's now at plus three special attack it's dynamax will be over but it's certainly going to return back to its normal size with a great advantage dazzling gleam going to come out from the cottony takes the rioli down to its focus sash living on that one hp but of course anything coming out from any of adam's side as long as it's able to connect we'll be able to pick up the ko rock slide coming out though from the rioli does a decent chunk to the opposing cottony but ghastly was able to nimbly dodge out of the way here and not have to take any more hp away yeah, nimbly dodge was the right phrase there, Lou, as um, it, it's really the end of the, the Dynamax turns there for Adam, but this Ghastly now going to be potentially choice locked into maybe even something like Dazzling Gleam, which will be able to deal with both the Riolu and the, the Gothita mm. pretty easily, uh, combined with that fake tears that we've seen already from the Cottony. Actually, just going to go straight for the Shadow Ball into the Gothita. Picks up that solid one-hit KO. I mean, Ryolu probably only really with those fighting type moves. That's not something Ghastly has to worry about too much. And it allows its partner, Cotney, to go for the Dazzling Gleam. Pick up the KO against the Ryolu and take the little cup for Adam Dorikot. 
Oh, I'm so pleased for Adam. Huge congratulations to him being our Little Cup champion. You know, he was runner up last time, able to come back, take his, you know, the learning from his loss and bring it here into the Pokemon Players Cup 2 Little Cup match. And huge congratulations to him. And of course, commiserations to Rosemary as well. Her team was awesome. And that game too, the way she was able to pull it back and showcase us Gigantamax Eevee, that was just a delightful cast of showdown. Yeah, it was great to see.